In 2009, an accident took place in a very dangerous underground cave system. You see, this cave system has three main claustrophobia-inducing passages, the helmet eater, the scout eater, and the bird canal. You must avoid these three tunnels at all costs if you do not want to risk your life. But sadly, in 2009, a caver on his way down into this cave made a grave mistake and got inside such a passage. This incident was so disturbing and tragic that the officials decided to seal off the cave to make sure that no such devastation will ever happen again. This is the story of the infamous Nadi Party Cave accident. In 1960, Dale Green and his friends discovered a cave in Utah. Being the first humans to ever explore it and go through its narrow passages and turns, they gave this cave a name, the Nadi Party Cave. Because the narrow turns and passages inside this cave were lined with clay, the texture of soft brown putty. Little did Dale or his friends know what this cave would become of in the distant future. A well-known cave that thousands of people come to explore every year. This cave is located outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. The cave's mouth is at the top of a hill called Blowhole Hill. The entrance is a 6 foot wide opening with an initial straight down drop of 15 feet. Once you make your way past that initial climb down, you have two options. As you can see in this map, you can either descend the big slide or go left towards the section of the cave called the maze. Either way, you are bound to come across a hazard unless you know what you are doing. The cave has been mapped 413 meters reaching a depth of 45 meters which means if you try to descend any deeper which no one has done so far you could go beyond 45 meters down into the cave and its darkness the problem is that only god knows where it will lead you in terms of the depth yeah this cave doesn't seem that dangerous to explore but that is not the reason why this cave became such well known and talked about in the caving community. Like I said previously, the three Titus passages, namely the Helmet Eater, the Scout Eater, and the Bird Canal, aren't just there to sound cool. According to the branch of the National Speleological Society in Utah, between 1999 and 2004, there had been six incidents of people getting seriously stuck and trapped in different tight squeezes of the cave. Luckily, in all six incidents, everyone made it out alive every single time, but each time, the rescuers feared the next incident would be fatal. So due to this fear the authorities and the experts had, they closed the cave in 2006 to prevent any future accidents. And it stayed that way for three years as the cave was reopened in 2009 where this story I'm gonna tell you takes place. It all started with just one caver, John Edward Jones. You see, he loved caving with his family. He frequently went caving with his father and brother Josh in Utah since they were little kids. Both John and Josh learned to love the underground environment and its darkness and beauty from a very young age. But one cave they never got to explore was the Naughty Party Cave. So John, when he turned 26, decided that it was about time that he explores this cave. He was married and had a one-year-old daughter. On top of being busy with the family life, he was also finishing medical school in Virginia. So when he finally got a break for the holidays, he came back to Utah to spend some time with his family. Also, Josh, who was 23 at the time, wanted to join John along with 9 other friends and family members on 24th of November in 2009, just a few days before Thanksgiving. They thought this was a good way to connect with each other ahead of the holidays. So at around 8pm, they entered the Naughty Party Cave. The last time John was in the cave was 9 years ago. So being 6 foot tall and 200 pounds heavy, he was not that little kid who could get through any cave passage anymore. But despite that, he still had the spirit. John's plan was to get to the bird canal, one of the three narrowest cave passages and make his way into it and do a little bit of exploring. So about an hour went by. John got to one of the incredible Nadi Pari cave formations, aka the Bird Canal. If you wanna explore this cave passage, you must crawl through extra extra carefully. 
Now, what John didn't know was that he has taken a wrong turn and found himself in an unmapped tunnel near Ed's push. He didn't even know that he was lost at the time. So when he saw a passage which was not the birth canal, he thought it was the birth canal. So he inched his way into it head first, moving forward using his hips, stomach and fingers. It was unbelievably narrow. Certainly he didn't think it would be that tight, but what he also didn't know is that this passage is in fact even more dangerous and narrower than the birth canal. But well, he didn't know that. So he was not that concerned and kept crawling forward head first, inching his way into the narrow tunnel. When some time passed, he realized something, but it was already a little too late by then. The realization he came to was that he has been making a fatal mistake all along. The further he crawled through the passage, the narrower and more downwards it got. At a certain point, he knew he was just about stuck, inverted at a 70 degree angle and had no room to turn around. It was so tight that he couldn't even wriggle back out of the way he had come. Plus, the tunnel goes downwards into the earth. So with the gravity, there's no way he could crawl back out in the position he was in even if he wasn't stuck. You see, Kevus are specially warned not to make this mistake, crawling headfirst in a narrow tunnel going downwards. So now John's only option was to press forward because there was nothing else to do. He tried exhaling the air in his chest so that he could fit through the little spares in the passage. It was barely 10 inches across and 18 inches high, about the size of the opening of a clothes dryer. The second John inhaled again, there wasn't enough space to take a full breath of air. His chest puffed back out and he got stuck for good. Now you might wonder, where were his friends and family members? Well, they weren't around when John inched his way into the passage. They were probably a bit behind or ahead of him. However, Josh and one of his friends were close by, so they found John pretty quickly. Since John hadn't gone too far into the passage, Josh right away could reach his brother's legs. He tried pulling at his calves, but it was pointless. John was too stuck and couldn't even move a muscle. However, probably due to the adrenaline rush, John slid into the passage even further, hoping the passage might get a bit bigger even by an inch, but sadly no, he got trapped even worse than before. His arms were now pinned beneath his chest and he couldn't move at all. Josh felt helpless not knowing what to do. In fact, he even started praying. Eventually, after trying many many times, Josh began running toward the exit of the cave to get some help while his friends stayed behind with John. Apparently, the rest of the group wasn't around at this point, probably they also exited the cave thinking John and Josh were outside. Within a few minutes, Josh alerted the authorities and help arrived immediately. John was still trapped about 400 feet into the cave and 100 feet below the surface. It was clearly a fatal situation. The first rescuer to get to John was a woman named Susie. By the time she arrived, it was 12.30 am on November 25th. By that point, John had been stuck and trapped for three and a half hours. That must feel like hell, not being able to move a muscle and breathe properly inside a dark passage. Susie had a good grasp of this situation and also knew that John was experiencing all kinds of terrors. She introduced her to John first, although all she could see was a pair of navy and black running shoes. John was thrilled and grateful to hear her voice. He said, Hi Susie, thanks for coming, but I really really wanna get out. Susie could feel how tense and terrified John was feeling just in his voice. She calmed him down and tried to keep him relaxed. So the mission to rescue John begins here. Hey guys, give me like 20 seconds of your time. I have a quick announcement to make. So I wanna let you know that I just created a Patreon. So if you guys want to see more of my content that you will not get to see here, or you just want to support me and my channel, you could become a Patreon. The link to it is down in the description box. Thank you. Over the next 24 hours, more than 100 rescue personnel tried every possible thing they could imagine to free John from the depths of the Nadi Party cave. 
Sadly, every plan they tried ended up being futile. John was unlucky that day. The way he was stuck and the position he was in made it impossible for the rescuers to free him. The best plan they had was to use a system of pulleys and ropes to try to free John from the tight spot. John was running out of time. The downward angle at which he was trapped was putting a great stress on his body because such a position requires the heart to work incredibly hard to continuously pump blood out of the brain. The rescuers were very aware of that and quickly tied John with a rope connected to a series of pulleys. Once everything was set up, they pulled as hard as they could. At first, it appeared to work and John was raised a decent distance. In fact, John was high enough that he even could make a bit of eye contact with one of the rescuers. But that didn't last for too long. All of a sudden, one of the pulleys failed and John slipped right back into the tighter section of that passage where he was stuck before. Apparently, the pulley came loose at its anchor point in the wall, which contains a substantial amount of loose clay. So that plan also did not succeed. The rescuers were left with no other plan now that their only best chance at freeing John was no more, and John was still trapped. The rescuers were so defeated, they literally had no other way to help John. 137 rescuers did their best and John gradually came to the agonizing realization that he's not going to make it. With no way to be free, his heart got to a point where it just couldn't function anymore. It suffered hours upon hours of strain due to his downward position. So finally, John died from cardiac arrest before midnight on the evening of November 25th of 2009. Rescuers were unable to do anything but see John trying to take his last few breaths. After 27 hours of constant battle, his heart finally gave out. In the Nadipati Cave's heyday, more than 25,000 of people per year visited the cave, but on that night of John's death, it all changed and no one will ever go in the cave again. About a week after John's death, the officials sealed off the cave for good. They couldn't recover his body and it still remains inside the cave to this day. Today, the Nadi Party Cave serves as a natural memorial and gravesite to John Edward Jones.